Hey, the performance uh, speaks for itself. It's been fun to watch. Yeah, and it's hard to argue with the team and how well they've done. They, they sort of thrust themselves into the consciousness of the town. So I think it, it all goes to the success on the ice. For the most part, the game's been pretty successful. We've had two Stanley Cup wins. I brought that whole idea together that it's time to win. Winning the Stanley Cup three times in the last seven years helps too. It's been incredibly successful. It was awesome. And for me, it's been uh, just a wonderful time to be a small part of. We didn't think much of them. Uh, they were an afterthought. Um, the team, even though they had a playoff string, was usually, you know, would make the playoffs and maybe win a round or something and be quickly out. Um, you know, there was a period from, say, 98 through, you know, 2005, 6, 7, somewhere in there, that the team was really bad, right? They were all out. The Blackhawks really didn't have a good philosophy of their thought process and what they wanted to do. Oh, I can remember going to a game uh, and probably about uh, 5,000 people in the stands. I didn't really watch the game much at all, so it was not for me. As a fan, it wasn't fun to watch the game because, of course, the product on the ice wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. I remember going to games and people would come for the national anthem and then they'd leave. And they'd go to a bar and they'd watch the game or they'd go home. You know, the was the, the excitement I wouldn't say they were a laughing stock, but their reputation wasn't good. Um, their, uh, as I said, their home games were on TV. The, the, the stadium wasn't anywhere near full. Uh, it just seemed to be going along from its own momentum. There wasn't really any excitement there. And so, you know, it was kind of a downtime for the, for the franchise. From a public consciousness, and certainly, you know, as I said, we were focused on a lot of other things and didn't really do much with the Blackhawks except a little bit on the news side. Mr. Wirtz's father, who belonged to the team too, didn't want to televise the, game, the home games because mm -hmm. he wanted to protect the season ticket holders. Why would you put a game on TV if you were a season ticket holder and people could just watch it at home? Wirtz's organization, Wirtz's family, was driven more about getting dollars and running a business versus running a hockey team. Yeah, he did do a very good job of drafting and scouting players and made some real misses on, on players from that 96, 97 time frame through the early 2000s before we started drafting really well. I think he was driven by Bill Works who really had a great mind and made some business but didn't really have the passion for a hockey team. So he didn't have the desire to run the excitement, the fun, for the atmosphere. He cared about the dollars. You have to spend the money for the good players and get some good draft picks. And I think it was a phase in the court, specifically talking about the salaries and the top players. I think a couple of things changed. I think one, you have the coaching change. When the uh, Savard was there and, and Quintel came in, his mindset was more driven towards a team that wanted to sell. What? Well, hey, Bill died, right? The owner died. Um, and, you know, Rocky, you know, just had wanted to put a stamp on the organization. We chart the transformation to when Bill Wirtz passed away and Rocky Wirtz took over the organization. Uh, Rocky even said there were a lot of changes that had to happen that his dad knew, um, but just couldn't bring himself to do. And, and by putting Rocky in charge, he felt like he had um, the ability and the need to go ahead and make those changes. The, the TV, the not being on home TV was a, a, an issue that, you know, there was the only guy really that, that had that view that he had 100% of the votes, right? So that change was made immediately. Certainly putting all the games on TV. Oh, sorry, Coach Quindle was on board. 
I, I think as much as I love Dennis Savard as a player, he was in a little over his head as a coach. And bringing on Joe Quenville, you know, helped those young players learn how to play the game the right way. Um, and the Rockets, you know, just wanted to, you know, have a much more um, proactive, um, cared about PR, cared about the image of the team much, much more than building. I think certainly um, bringing in Stan Bowman as a general manager and utilizing Scotty Bowman, his father, as a scout and, you know, consultant uh, was huge for them. Just great, great hockey minds. So just a lot of uh, fine picking the right guys for, uh, to build the team. You also have a young team. Remember, you had a fourth of the kids that were all drafted by the Blackhawks. You had Brower, you had Fickle, you had Seabrook, Keith, uh, Darmelson, Crawford. Yeah, I think they were. I think it's really the five four players, right? Starts with Jump and Keith, he's a fabulous player. You know, multiple North Brent Seabrook, and Corey Crawford. Uh, Jonathan Hayes, Patrick Gage, those five draft picks are really good. good, good. All those guys were drafted by Chicago, and they all grew up skating in the farm to see them. Yeah, they, grew, they built a very big four group of players with a lot of skill and speed and talent. And then you had Hayes and Gage to it, and the rest of history. You know, they had that great core, right? They had Seabrook and Keith, they had Kane, they had Tay. I think the Hosa signing uh, was huge for a couple reasons. The first one was they felt like it was time to win, and they, they the, the, the very idea that somebody would come there expecting the Blackhawks to win uh, hadn't happened in a while. And now here's a guy. He wasn't just there for the money. They got the right guy with the right attitude. So that was the one to me that kind of tipped the scales and boom, before you know it, we were uh, toting the Stanley Cup around the city. It's been pretty successful. Had three Stanley Cup wins, and that's time to be very, very you could say like a phoenix rising from the ash, right? They became this great and, and glorious franchise. You know, as the team has gotten more success on the ice, more kids are playing, right? Mm -hmm. They um, they have these guys that are their heroes, right? The best players on the team. Now to see how they have uh, catapulted. Uh, every game's been sold out probably for the last six or seven seasons. Uh, they've revolutionized the idea of hockey in Chicago. You see people wearing Blackhawk gear and merchandise everywhere. They've reached out to uh, segments of, of fans that never supported or even knew hockey. They've been a business model of success, not just for sports, but for any business that everybody wants to study.